Well, it happens this Friday, Trace. Graham Connor's 60th birthday, and that means the release of the long-awaited 60 Summers. Great new track from Graham. And people that were at the Golden Guitars would have seen him being inducted into the role of renown and then performing it live. And it's a pleasure to have Graham with Trace in the Big D tonight. Graham, congratulations on everything thus far and what's happening on Friday. Well, it's certainly... Uh, I must have some needy sort of uh, personality to release a record on my birthday sort of like hello it's my birthday and i'm releasing a record it's a great opportunity to bring forward a two cd collection and uh, as you say it's a combination of looking backwards and looking forwards with new songs and a career overview one of the things that uh, i think the probably the first question everyone's going to ask you is how's your blood pressure <laughs> I got high blood pressure mm -hmm. and my heart beats fast. <laughs> it's under control. Thank you, Darren. I really appreciate that. I can say for those who weren't at the Golden Guitars this, this year, it was a very moving time when Graham accepted the role of Renown. One of the things that I think everyone in the industry looks at is just how much uh, support Lynn means to you. We were kids together in a band, so we have shared this journey through all the years. I think it was evident on the evening <laughs> that I was a bit lost for words, and she, as always, was able to prompt me, look, we're a team. I may write the songs and I may stand on the stage. The force of, a, of two people focused on the same dream. It's so beautiful to watch, too, and we thank both of you for that, something that a lot of people can look up to and aspire to um, with you know, a long relationships and that she's like having a, like a, a mobile teleprompter isn't she yes there's no doubt about it thankfully i don't need it when i'm in concert i can stand on my own two feet it was just one of those occasions i have to tell you why because i've had golden guitars arias apera awards when you receive those sort of awards in the back of your mind it's humbling and it's all those sort of things but you do have this conversation that says fantastic um let's see if i can do better next time and blah 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 when it's a role of renown that's it there's only one you're not going to get another one you have to enjoy the moment and i found that a bit overpowering emotionally i was very thankful that lynn could uh, assist me i think it was wonderful i think everyone that's been associated in australian country music thought it was a, a wonderful thing we're talking to graham connors uh, it's his 60th birthday on friday the the single's been out there 60 summers people have been enjoying that and it's a double album out and about um, after friday one of the things we i think a lot of people are looking forward to is the tour that's going to be taking off uh, early next month right around Australia. This is the beginning. The Queensland leg is the first. Unfortunately, I'm so sad to say that we're not at the Sunshine Coast. The closest we are is Redlands in the southern suburbs of uh, the Redlands Performing Arts Centre in, in Brisbane and, and then on to Toowoomba. I think Bundaberg might be a bit too far north, but <laughs> Redlands is OK. Well, it's uh, it's not uncommon for people to he head a little further north each year, is it? Thank you, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tracy, I know why you work with him. He's got it. Whatever uh, it is, he's got it. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He thinks he's the eye candy of our operation on the Brains Trust. <laughs> One of the things I did want to touch on, Graham, is um, obviously over the years there's been a lot of songs written for other people as well as ones that people have, have picked up. We do a lot of things around the amateur country music scene and we see a lot of people performing the songs like Ringer and the Princess and a uh, bunch of let different the, songs. Let the Cane Fields Burn is oh, a popular one it, as well. It, yeah. It's another one as well and the name escapes and there's uh, Baseball Caps on Backwards. Ah, oh, the Great Australian, great Australian Dream. Dream. Oh, yes. Yeah, another yeah. big big popular one there. Is songwriting been a love, a passion? Is it something that comes natural? Do you have to sit down is probably the question and make time for it. Songwriting is the beginning and will be the end of my career. It's the backbone on which everything else is built. Uh, the recording, the touring. As a child, I can clearly remember listening to the radio in fascination at how a song moved to me and why it moved me and how it developed in a verse and then it came to a chorus and then the next verse was some sort of development on the previous idea. There was an analytic side of me as, as a child that found songs just spellbinding and to this day I listen to songs in a way that it's, it's like breathing, it's a very important thing for me. You do need, if you're going to be a writer of any sort, a songwriter, a playwright, a novel, poet, you have to do your work. You have to get up and 
face the blank page each day. A lot of people assume that the creative process is a lightning bolt or a, a moment, there's the flash, and then I don't do anything for a month until the next flash comes along. That will only hold you for a little while. You need to have the discipline of writing each day contributing something to your art and craft. They talk about 10,000 hours being the requirement for any form. And I believe it's the same with creative activity. You need to put in the time. And it's only by doing that you that you discover your personality in your work. You need to dedicate. And it's, it's sheer bliss. It's an enjoyment to, to spend three hours a day working on something creative. It's wonderful to hear the passion that you've got in like just telling us how you go about that. And that's obviously how you get your songs to paper and then obviously out there to our people. And we want to thank you very much for doing that. And for the, our listeners at home, if you want to go on the 60, the 60 years journey, I suppose, I know we've got the 60 summers there, but if you want to go on that journey, hop onto Graham Connors. You can get onto the websites, Facebook pages, all that sort of stuff. There's no way you cannot find him. Find out where he's touring and get on board and join the journey with him. Thank you so much, Tracy. And there's a new film clip that's really worth a look. I think you go to YouTube, punch in Graham Connor's 60 Summers, and we've just completed it, and it was so much fun. All local talent and production. It sort of shows the side of the song that I think is a lot of fun. Well, it is a bit of fun and very interesting too. And I suppose that does bring your blood pressure up doing a bit of that stuff in that film clip. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you leave my blood pressure on. It's doing fine. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> well, let's hope so. It's been a wonderful conversation sharing with our listeners tonight, um, Graham. We really thank you taking out the time. We, I could do this all night, sit and talk about your career and, and what's going on, but uh, you're a busy man. It's been lovely to, for you to give up that time tonight. It's a pleasure to talk to you, and I do appreciate your support. We're going to go out with the new single, 60 Summers. Have a listen to the arrangement of this, folks, and listen for the classic bit of saxophone in there. It is a great arrangement of song. This is Graham Connors and 60 Summers, and happy birthday for Friday. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Tracy. I'll, uh, I'll raise a glass in your direction.